Okay, so today what we're doing is we're looking at shapes, but instead of drawing a shape by using a sprite, we are going to draw our shapes on the screen uh, mathematically. Now in order for us to work out what we're going to do, what we're going to do is we're going to do some planning first. What you can see here is the beginning of an algorithm. Now, rather than using long words, algorithm is just a flowchart, it's a simple set of steps that will show us how to complete our process. Now if we look here, um, we have the start section. So when we start, we're going to ask how many sides does the shape have? Um, and that's the first part of our program. We're going to output to the user how many sides does the shape have? And the user is then going to type in the number. And that should be a number between 3 and 10 for our particular program. OK, so answer, we're going to use um, a variable within our program, and a variable is just a piece of memory which holds some data, and the answer that we're given is going to be the number of shape sides. We're then going to move our pen, so in Scratch the pen is going to move to the standard start point. After that we're going to draw a line. Once the line is drawn, we need to then rotate our pen by an angle, and I'll show you how to calculate that angle in just a second. And we need to know if all the sides are drawn. So at the minute, all we've done is we've moved our pen to the start point over here. We've drawn a line, so we've only drawn one line, and we've rotated by an angle. Now, no shape only ever has one line, and we know that because we said up here at the beginning it has to have between three and ten sides. So we have to work out, are all the sides drawn? Now we'd say at this start, no it's not, so we're going to go back up here, we're looping, and we're going to draw another line. We're going to rotate by the angle again, and then we need to ask again, are all sides drawn? So if this was a three-sided shape, we could go around here three times, are all sides drawn? Yes they are, and then we're going to output to the user the name of the shape. Once we've output that to the user, we've come to the end of our algorithm because we know that that's now finished. We've, cre we've created an entire process that will say go from up here, find out the number of sides, move our pen, draw those lines, rotate, continue drawing those lines and rotating until all the sides are drawn. After that say the name of the shape and then we can end the process. Now obviously we're going to need to do a little bit of maths for this. So how are we actually going to draw the shape? We need to be able to calculate the angles. Now the important thing about this is that all of the outside angles should add up to 360 degrees, so a full circle. So if you are looking for a formula, your formula is down here, and it is 360 divided by n. Now n is the number of times or number of lines that we have. So how many sides does our shape have? So 360 divided by the number of sides equals A, and A is the angle. So for a triangle, which has three sides, it's 360 divided by 3. Each of our angles needs to be 120 degrees. So here you can see the outside angle around here is 120 degrees. So therefore we're going to go up here, we're going to go 1, 2, and 3, and end up back in the same place. In the actual code, what it actually looks like is a simple four sprites at the bottom. Uh, we have a dinosaur here. Um, in fact, we have two dinosaurs, but this is our main one. Uh, we have a pencil, and our pencil is going to appear to be drawing our shape. Um, and then we also have a next button, which allows us to loop through the program. So let's have a look at our first dinosaur. Now, he was the first one that we put in there. Um, and we go up here, and we say when the green flag is clicked, we're using our pen over here to clear all of the drawings that we've made. So initially we clear it, we're going to get him to say hello to you for one second, and then he's going to ask how many sides does your shape have. If we go into sensing, you have this thing here which is called ask, um, and then you also have an answer. Now if you untick this, it hides it from the screen. However, if you keep it ticked, you can see up here that your answer is displayed. Now this is a variable uh, based upon user input. OK, but we're going to hide that for now. So we're going to ask how many shapes will your side have, so we can use that answer all the way through our program. And then we're going to use a broadcast. And a broadcast is a message that's sent to all of the other sprites. 
not sent to the user, uh, but sent to the sprites. And this broadcast is called draw. Um, and we want to use draw because then what we can do is our pencil will know that it needs to draw. So let's go to the pencil. This is where all the complicated code comes in. So let's look up here just to start off with. When I receive draw. So the action, or the event, is when I receive. So it's not when the flag is clicked, or when the sprite is clicked, but actually when I receive the message to draw. Again, I'm going to clear the screen. I'm going to lift my pen up, because if I didn't lift my pen up, I would drag a line. Imagine keeping a pencil on a piece of paper um, and moving it to the place where you wanted to start drawing. If you didn't lift your pen up, you'd leave a line. I'm going to set the pen colour. You can set that to anything you like, but I've set it to red. Um, and the pen size is the width of the line that we're about to draw. I'm going to go to position 2676. Now, if you look down here, you can see your X and Y coordinates. And as I move the mouse, they change. So let's try and move that 2676 is going to be somewhere around here. There we go. So the pen should move from down here to somewhere up here. And then the pen goes down, which means that I've then essentially put my pen onto paper. Now the reason I've put a rotation style, which is don't rotate, is I don't want my pen to be whizzing around in a big circle. I just want it to move around. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is I want to put a repeat in there. Now my repeat is for the number of sides that we've just entered in. So if you remember, I asked in my dinosaur, how many sides will your shape have? Um, and that answer goes into that variable, which is called answer. So I'm going to repeat for the number of sides. Now what I'm then going to do is I'm going to move this block in here. Um, I'm going to move 50 steps. I'm then going to turn by a calculation. Now that calculation is here. Now if you remember, we were talking about 360 divided by the number of sides. So that's going back to our formula and our planning. So 360 divided by the number of sides. So I know what the angle is because I'm using my calculation. So I'm turning by 360 divided by number of sides, and then I'm waiting for a second before I move on. After i finished, I want to bring my pen up, I want to put my pen away, and then I want to broadcast this say shape. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take that broadcast off for just a second um, and show you what happens just for this little bit here, and then we're going to use this one here. Okay. So, hello, how many sides for your shape of? Well, let's try a triangle because we know that has three sides. There we go. One, two, and three. It's drawn my triangle. And that's it. But that triangle is incredibly small. I quite like a bigger one. So, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to move this one out here and put this block in here. Now, what I've put in here is if my answer is more than six, so if I have more than six sides, instead of having an incredibly big shape, I just make the move 50. Otherwise, I could make it 100, which makes the shape a little bit bigger so I can see it. So if I put that inside my repeat, I've then got if the number of sides is more than 6, move only 50 steps, so draw this smaller amount for each side. Um, but if it's not, so else, if it's not more than 6, then move 100 steps, which means make it a little bit bigger. Um, I still haven't put this broadcast on, I'll do that in a minute, but let's have a look and see what happens to our three-sided shape now. There we go, hello, how many shapes will your side have? It's still going to have three. There we go, one, two, three, a much bigger triangle. Okay, um, now, we know that's a triangle, but what happens if we want to say, well actually I want to have a nine-sided shape. So there we go. That's drawing my nine-sided shape. Fabulous. Okay, so I've now got a nine-sided shape. And you can see the edges are a little bit smaller because we've got here the answer is more than six, so we're only moving 50 steps. Um, but what is a nine-sided shape called? Well, maybe what we can do is we can broadcast say shape and then we can use this second dinosaur over here to actually tell us what the shape is. 
Okay, so we're going to say here, when I receive say shape, so exactly the same as we had for our pen, it's a broadcast, um, we're going to make them appear. Um, but also when the flag is clicked, we also want to make him disappear. So we only want him to arrive once we've actually got um, once we've actually got a, a shape to say. Now what I've done down here is I've actually hidden this. I'm going to bring these up a little bit now. Um, this is a little bit of code which is going to then say if my answer is 3 then say this is a triangle. For 4 it's a square, for 5 it's a pentagon, and on and on, all the way up to a 10 sided shape. Okay, once you've said whichever it is that he needs to say, he's then going to hide again. So let's see what happens to our nine sided shape now. So, hello, still going to have a nine sided shape. Off we go, let's draw that shape. Okay, there's our nice shape. There we go, this is an onagon, and off he goes, and he disappears. And what we have, we have this final sprite over here, which is our next button, and that allows us to, when the sprite is clicked, broadcast next. Um, and if we go back to our original dinosaur, you can see I've duplicated that code for when the flag is clicked, ask how many sides, and also when I receive next, clear the screen, and do it again. So this allows us to create a loop within our code by calling these functions again. So we're calling this and this here, this broadcast will allow us to then call what we call a procedure. And because we've written it somewhere else, we can call it again and again as many times as we need to. So let's send this off. Let's click the flag. Hello. Uh, I think I'm going to go for a six sided shape this time. Off we go. There is our six-sided shape being drawn. Okay, this is a hexagon. Excellent stuff. Let's do another one. So we click next and it starts all over again. So let's do a four-sided shape this time. A little bit quicker. There's our four-sided shape. And this is a square. Okay, and that's essentially all of the code that you need in order to have a program which draws shapes for you.